jamais personne. Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Today we're going to take a look at a fragrance that's very much a Fragcom favorite. That one is called Midnight in Paris. I could make a joke about the Hilton sex tape, but I'm too dignified to do that. I'm pretty sure the statue of limitations has uh, has run out. This one is from Van Cleef and Arpels, and it's actually one of the first 20 fragrances that I pe picked up when I started collecting. And before I talk about the scent, let's do the house quickly. Van Cleef and Arpels is a French jeweler, watch, and perfume maker. They were founded by Charles Arpels and his brother-in-law, Alfred Van Cleef, in 1896. They opened up their first shop in the Palace Venedome in 1906, quickly getting notoriety for their use of precious stones and their expertise and innovation in stone setting technique. They opened additional boutiques in 1909, 1939, and 1942. Uh, eventually, the family immigrated to the United States where they opened their first U.S. boutique in New York. Eventually, they expanded to Asia as well. And this was a family business really up until 1999 when it was finally acquired by a large financial group. Fragrance was their first first foray in 1978 with a scent called First for Women, which was a classical floral scent with aldehydes. For men, first they did Czar uh, in 1989, which definitely has a following. And they did their first luxury collection in 2009 with their collection Extraordinaire. That collection is available at fine retail spots like Bergdorf, Goodman, and Lucky Scent. Uh, I need to give that line a bit of a more, more thorough look. I, I really only checked out Vanilla uh, or and didn't love that one, but I would like to check out their Oud and Cologne Noir. Now, Interperfume is currently doing scents for the house, and they did Midnight Release for them in 2010. It was a collaboration between Domitil Bertier and Olivier Poage. Poage, of course, did Dior uh, and he's going to be forever ingrained in, in fragrance uh, heads brains because of that. He's also done Valentino Womo, Kir Beluga for Guerlain, Kenzo Power, F. Ferragamo, Por Homme. Uh, Domitil Bertier is a little less established on the men's side of things. He, he did do the beat for men by Burberry and just Cavalli and just Cavalli Gold for him and a few others. But I'd say he's probably best known for, for doing Flower Bomb and many of its flankers for Victor and Rolf. No wise on Midnight in Paris. At the top, we've got Holly rosemary, a bergamot, a Malfi lemon and leather. In the middle, we've got Styrax, tea and lily of the valley. And in the base, we have incense, benzoin, tonka bean, almond and amber. The review here is for the EDT and not the EDP. This one comes in a few sizes. Most likely you're gonna see a 75 ml bottle or 125 ml bottle. In front of you, you're looking at the 125 ml EDT. This one is currently available on fragrance net for literally about 25 to 35 dollars edt or edp you should never have to pay more than 40 dollars for a bottle of this now we want to talk presentation here because i think this is one of the the maybe the most beautiful bottle in the price range the box is pretty standard it does say midnight in paris when cleveland our pills it sort of has that moon effect on the front of the box. It does very clearly label this one Eau de Toilette. You have um, information on the bottom, nothing on the back uh, except the name Van Cleef and Arpels uh, and the Van Cleef and Arpels logo. But the bottle is just gorgeous. Uh, you could see it has the constellation on it. The detailing is beautiful. My bottle is a little uh, scratched up and you could see Van Cleef and Arpels. Uh, Midnight in Paris. Look at the pattern um, on the cap, uh, on the side of the cap. The sprayer works really, really well. Um, and the bottle just has this gorgeous, gorgeous translucent constellation on it. It's just really something to behold. Uh, it's it's pretty shiny. It's heavy. It just looks really masculine, really elegant in a collection. And I honestly don't say this often. I'm sure you guys know this. I think it's honestly worth having this one uh, 
for the bottle alone. That's how much I like the presentation. And uh, I think this one is a great, and I do mean a great fragrance, really for someone just starting to care about the fragrances that they're wearing and interest, interested in those fragrances and still wants to smell good because this one smells really good. It's definitely better than a lot of generic freshies out there and, and the price is just insane. Um, it has a bit of that signature Olivier Pois style and I think that's almost a sort of candy leather note that you find in Dior Homme and that you find in Valentino Uomo. And keep in mind that we are reviewing the EDT version here, which is a bit lower, a bit lighter than, than the EDP. For me, this one is really about three notes, okay? There's a faint, and I really mean faint citrus at the top of this fragrance that smells like a cross between lemon and bergamot. There's a very tamed and almost friendly leather note in this one. And then there's a cross between some vanilla and tonka everything else that i pick up and i do pick up little whiffs of incense and tea but everything else to my nose at least in the edt is like really held in check so just think opening of that citrus with the leather with the tea and with the slight incense as then as this one progresses the leather and the vanilla really become the main notes and they are really lovely here the vanilla actually i i think is coumarin uh because it does have a bit of an almond like vibe to it and coumarin sort of does give off that vanilla nutty uh nutty nutty smell as this fragrance dries down, it becomes a little bit smoky and there's a slight resinous vibe as well. And uh, the leather is just as friendly. So is that smoke. This is not the leather of Bellamy uh, or, or, or Pure Distance Black or even of Tuscan Leather. It's really soft. I'm sorry, Pure Distance M. Uh, it's really soft and supple, highly treated leather that you might pick up from like a high-end designer sneaker, uh, like a Mason Martin Margiela sneaker or Giuseppe Zanotti sneaker. Performance is good on the EDT. It's going to be better on the EDP, but it's fine here. I prefer the EDT a little bit because I think it's easier to, to wear it year-round. I get six to eight hours with decent projection and some nice sillage. Uh, this one's definitely unisex, but I think it just works better for a man than a woman. And I think it's great for three seasons out of the year. Uh, it, it's not easy to wear either version in the summertime, but I think the EDT is, is fine for cool uh, summer nights. They're definitely both very spring appropriate. And it's a real jack of all trade fragrance. Could easily be signature scent worthy, date, work, night out, casual weekend. It just all works. I think another reviewer, Tunes, uh, said that he actually does a couple sprays of the EDT and the EDP, and he really likes that combination. I could really see that working. If for some reason you're unable to get this or you don't want this one but want something similar, yeah, you could definitely look at Bulgari Black, which draws the most comparisons to this fragrance. You could look at Diorome. You could look at Valentine. Tino Womo, you know, if you're looking for a higher end version of this, Tuscan Leather uh, sort of accomplishes what, what this one does. Or you could look to the, the Fahrenheit EDP, which kind of has a similar vibe to this one. But this one's really unique. And at the price, I don't think you should look for an alternative. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this one, I think they would tell you that it is a gorgeous presentation. It is a great price. It is unique. And it's a great starter scent for someone just becoming a frag head. Um, if someone were trying to talk you out of this one, I think they would say that, look, it could be a bit boring for a niche snob and it's not the best performance in the world. But other than that, I, I think people would really struggle with talking this one down. So pretty easy rating for me when you factor in how wearable. This one is the price, the availability, the quality, the presentation. For me, uh, Midnight in Paris is an eight and a half out of 10. I can really only knock it in two places. And that is, it, it's a bit boring. Some do think it's a knockoff of black, which I don't 100% agree with. But I think Diorome does the same thing. And um, that's a way more unique composition with the iris. At that price, though, this can be had for, it should really be a no-brainer for anyone looking to, to build a collection. Um, so a niche head might shrug this one off, but to someone who wants to smell great different, it doesn't have a huge budget, it's going to be really hard to do better. And I wish Van Cleef and Arpels would, would follow this up with a flanker or something else for men because they really did a great job with this one. The presentation is stunning and just unreal for that $30 range. So guys, that has been my review 
of uh, Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels. As you can tell, this is a scent that, that I really enjoy. Look, look how much I've used. Um, if you have any questions on this one, please feel free to reach out. We'll be back next week with more videos. Guys, my name is Maximilian. I'm a strong Personne n'a jamais pris dans ses bras.